Well, today I want to talk about a video editing tip that I heard from all of the YouTube gurus and video editors for YouTube and all those kind of people um, that I tried to apply to my videos and I'm pretty sure made my videos much worse. Now I'm hoping you won't just kind of hear what the tip is and then click away from the video. Uh, I actually want to make a bigger point out of this that I think has been helpful to me and how I create videos and hopefully it'll help all of you in your own kind of content creation, whatever it is that you're making. So the tip, and I'm sure if you've been around kind of watching, you know, how to grow a YouTube channel, how to make YouTube videos, all that kind of content that you've come across this as well. Uh, and that is to cut all of the dead air out of your videos. So basically whenever there's a pause or you're kind of taking a moment, just catch your breath or think as you're going through your videos, just to grab that and cut that out. And a lot of the examples are going pretty hard with this to a really fast paced, high energy video style. Maybe you're just doing this with jump cuts or, or maybe you're kind of doing heaps of B-roll that's moving all the time. However exactly you're covering over it, basically you want your, your voice coming through just constantly. There's never downtime, it's just continually rolling, keeping people engaged. Now the reason why this is recommended is because uh, if you're very familiar with YouTube, uh, watch time is really important. People staying on your video, how long they watch for is really important. And so we're all about hooking people and keeping them watching. But actually, if we think about it for a second, I think it's pretty unlikely that a half a second pause as you catch your breath is going to bore people so much that they click away from your videos. You know, if the content is good, if, if our personality is gelling with whoever's watching, uh, then they're going to keep watching through those moments. But I bought into it anyway and for a while there I was editing quite aggressively, quite hard, cutting between stuff. Um, and it just came across firstly too fast paced and actually this massive wall of information that was just too much to actually process and enjoy listening to. But also it just didn't come across as me anymore. I was trying to be some kind of YouTube creator that I wasn't uh, and it really wasn't gelling with people. I actually even started getting some comments from people saying that there were too many cuts and it was feeling jumpy and, and hard to watch. And so the point of all this is not to say edit more slowly. Um, for me, that's actually been a helpful thing. I'm not leaving kind of five or six seconds in while I think about what my next line is, but just letting some of that natural pacing come through has been a really big improvement for my videos. But as I said, I want to make a much larger point than that. Uh, and that is that as a YouTuber or whatever it is you're making videos for, you're making documentaries, whatever you're doing, you want to find your own voice as a creator. I think we start listening to all the YouTube gurus a bit too much sometimes, and there's often good advice in there, I'm not putting all that down. Uh, but what we end up doing is becoming or trying to be the same as everyone else, where there's just these rules you're meant to follow to make a good video. And any of us who've enjoyed art for any length of time know that there aren't just a set of rules that you follow and magically create a good product. To give you an example of this, um, I'm interested in the tech space on YouTube, and there are two really big creators in that space, uh, Marquez Brownlee uh, and also Mr. Who's the Boss. Now, Mr. Who's the Boss is quite high paced, fast editing. There's lots of B-roll and changes and all kinds of things, fancy animations, almost constant. Now, Marquez and his team have amazing cinematography and stuff going as well, but there's a bit more of a relaxed pace to their videos. And that kind of comes through from his personality as well. And they don't need to be the same as each other. They're two different creators in the same space, but doing different things with different styles. And it works fine. They're both huge creators. And I think it's a helpful illustration to say, I'm not saying you need to slow down your edits. If you want to have high paced, fast editing, you're high energy, you're just going all the time, then that's fine. Do that and create the videos that you want to make in that space. But if you're someone who's a bit more relaxed, you want to be almost more reflective in how you're communicating stuff. Or maybe you're talking through really dense information and actually just going at a bit slower pace helps people process that, then feel free to do that. So if you want to have 30 cuts a minute in your videos, that's fine. And if you want to talk for six minutes and leave that unedited, then that's fine too. You want to be finding your voice and finding what works for you as a creator. In the end, that authenticity does actually come through, especially on YouTube, more than TV or other medium that we were uh, making videos for in the past. That authenticity comes through and is what audiences are actually going to connect with. When you look at the big YouTubers who have big loyal audiences, they're willing to be themselves and not just follow the trends of what everyone else is doing. So if nothing else, I hope this video is permission for you to say, actually make the videos you want to make. Don't feel like you need to follow a whole bunch of particular editing tips and tricks to make the, the magical formula that will go viral. Make the videos you want to make, make the videos you're proud of, and let the results take care of themselves from there. But hey, if you've enjoyed this and you want to kind of hear a little bit more of my story, I actually made a video not too long ago talking through how I killed my YouTube channel. So you can watch that up here, uh, and I'd love to see you over there.